A second way of finding probability is to use the empirical method. And the definition of the empirical method is you repeat a procedure many times and use the results to estimate probability. So to kind of put that in a more formula looking format, we just take the number of times that E occurred divided by the number of times that the procedure was repeated where E came out, where E was occurring. And this is where something that you don't have the known number of outcomes. So, you know, for example, down here, I look at the probability of having a girl. Now you would think it's 50-50 having a girl or a boy, but even though it, you know, it's dependent upon an X or a Y chromosome, they don't necessarily have a 50-50 chance of coming out. And there's actually, I know, biological studies that based on the time of ovulation and the heat of the body and all sorts of stuff. So if we really wanted to find the probability of having a girl, we could go look at, you know, a thousand birth records. I mean, you know, there's HIPAA laws with hospitals. I'm not sure how we're going to get this thousand birth records, but, you know, maybe we go to the census office. But what we'll do is we'll divide the number of girls that were born by the thousand records we looked at. And we now have created a probability where we didn't have a set known number of outcomes, but we kind of created one. And as I already said, you know, we often use the classical method when we have a set number of outcomes, but that it's not always possible. And so I just give another example here where, you know, the probability of selecting a student who takes a night class can be found with the classical method because we're going to go to the registration. We can, you know, divide up the number of students. But if I want to find the probability of a student who enjoys a night class, then I don't have information out there that's existing that I can draw on. I would have to survey a bunch of students, take the number of who enjoyed it, divided by all the total number of students that I interviewed. And when it comes to the empirical method, because you're repeating a procedure, the law of large numbers is an important concept to utilize. And this says, when you perform an event a large number of times, you'll get a value that's close to the actual probability. So in other words, the more times you repeat it, the closer you'll get to the true value. And I give an example here about tossing a coin a thousand times. You would think from the classical method we should get tails 500 times, half the time we toss it, but you actually might get tails something like 515, I'm just making that number up. But if you calculated the probability, 51.5% using the empirical rule, pretty close to the classical method, which would have given us the true 50%. And when it comes to tossing a coin, we don't need to use the empirical method because we do know from the classical method that it's going to be 50%.